So this is going to be kind of rant because uh, I feel I need to just get some things off my chest. And that is something needs to be done about comp. I feel a lot of the problems that people talk about stem from solo queue. Because when you group up with people, a lot of those problems disappear. Whether it's two, three, four, five, six man, the larger the group, the more the problems disappear. You actually end up with a different set of problems, which is hero specializations, like who can play what. Those are separate problems, but you don't get things like problems with grouping up, communication. Just basic things are just not really there when you're in a group. Sometimes when you're in solo queue, you get grouped up with a four-man or five-man group that does not enter team chat. I don't think that should ever be the case. A lot of the complaining is about stomps rather than close games. I think people respect close games, even if they lose. I don't like the idea of getting stomped three times in a row and then I stomp the enemy team the next game. It's, it's just not fun. I think the input-output value of competitive is very disproportionate. You could spend a long time in competitive and just feel like you, you got nothing done. Even if you feel like you are improving, there's still a feeling of progress there if you feel like you're improving. There's a lot of situations where you don't even feel like you're improving. You're basically feeling like you're babysitting or trying to coach the rest of your team. But again, this is all in solo queue most of the time, right? This has evolved into a huge problem with people blaming each other in solo queue. Because of all the blame that's being thrown around, that's where people start believing that they aren't climbing because of their teammates. As a plat player, and I've been stuck in plat for the last three seasons, and all of season six, I was completely toxic. So that's for another video that I will talk about. But the reason you are not climbing is because you're not there yet. I'm going to explain this in another video as well. Um, there is a huge difference between knowledge of the game and execution of that knowledge. So just know that difference. So yes, your team isn't great, but in order to climb, you have to be that X factor. You have to be that X factor and carry your team. And yes, I'm saying you can carry in Overwatch, but the definition of carry is different than I think n normally you would think it is. Most times when you say, oh, carry the game, it's really like, oh, just kill everything or demolish everything. No, it's... Being able to carry in Overwatch is about making the right decisions at the right time and just being intelligent, as well as mechanically skilled. If you, As long as your aim is decent, it doesn't have to be the best. As long as your aim is decent, you can climb very high with just a lot of knowledge in the game, knowing about hero picks, hero countering, how to dissect the enemy comp. You can do that yourself, and knowing which teammates to help at which time if they're in combat. But again, I'm just trailing off right now because like I said, this is a bit of a rant. I think the way to fix comp is that Blizzard needs to encourage people to group up. Solo queue should be viewed as the poor man's comp. I'm a big advocate of making a solo queue playlist. Separate that from a group's playlist. Two different playlists. I personally don't think uh, when you solo queue you should be teamed up with a four man group because most of the time they don't even join chat anyways. Groups should be with groups and solo queue its own thing and I think over time people will view it as oh yeah if you want to have a terrible time in comp go hit up that solo queue playlist that's just one thing I think comp needs another is we need an LFG system not a third party the stay is team feature is just not enough in this game even if you go to gamer link or discord a lot of it is either slow or it's people that are still at school or work and you have to remember to team up with them hours later like we need something in the game it, that you can use in the moment to team up with people. If you play Overwatch enough, sometimes you can predict the outcome of a match before it even starts. Now I'm not saying if you're tilted and you're just like, oh, we don't have this hero or this many healers or whatever, we're just going to lose. No, you can tell by something as basic as, oh, no one's communicating. Or, oh, the comp has five DPS and one healer. Now you can make arguments like, oh, that doesn't secure the loss for your team. It's like, you're right. It doesn't because the only way that your team would succeed is if the other team was doing the same thing or worse. So the only thing you could do is hope that the enemy team is also not communicating and also has a terrible comp. Or if they do have a decent comp of 2-2-2, that they are playing out of their comfort zone. They're playing out of their roles. So that Reinhardt, who's a DPS main, isn't going to play Reinhardt that well. And that's how you beat them. 
because your team is just mechanically better. Do you know how low that bar is set to just say, oh, as long as the uh, as long as two or three people on the other team are not communicating, we have a chance. That's a horrible bar to be set. Just the basics of communication dramatically increases your win percentage. But it's such a basic thing, like it's in the foundation of Overwatch itself. And it's been over a year and people still sometimes will just not communicate. Even on console, which is where I am, there's no text chat whatsoever. If you want to send a message, you have to send it to individuals. And you have to wait for the PlayStation UI to show up, which can be slow. Voice chat is all we have. And there's still plenty of people that don't use it. This is part of the reason why I still feel like solo queue in its own playlist should have role limits. It's already built into the game. You can go into custom game right now and set role limits. Granted, the roles aren't the best right now because you have attack and defense. And everyone knows it's not exactly the case when it comes to those heroes. But introducing role limits, I think, would create more enjoyable, balanced games, even though people don't get to play what they want all the time. Is it a perfect solution? No, but the amount of complaints about one tricks or people who don't run certain things or going in with Roadhog as your only tank or Zen as your only healer, like you really just have to choose what you prefer. Like what's the lesser of two evils here? People like to mirror what the pros are doing when it comes to comps. They see triple DPS, triple tank, and they're like, oh, the pros are doing it, so I can do it in my solo queue games where it's a 50-50 chance that there will be people talking. But you're talking about pros that they have to talk. Yeah, sure, some of them are quiet, but only because they don't want to clog up the comms. But you know what I mean. How do you expect to run these highly specialized comps in solo queue with such efficiency like the pros? If you want to run those specialized comps, that's what group comp would be for. Team up with your friends or people that you know or people in an LFG that should be built into the game and run those types of comps. They don't belong in solo queue. I've said this before. If you want to make an argument for GMs in top 500s, even masters, that's fine. That's a valid argument. But ask yourself, what happens more? Running into one tricks, throwers, people who don't know how to run their roles, or you running a triple tank or triple DPS or dive tank that goes off smoothly? because everyone knows what they're doing. How often does that really happen? By introducing a role limit, not only would you have more generally balanced games, but you would be forcing people to be flex players, which is kind of what everyone's goal should be, right? Don't just one trick, even though it's a viable play style and Blizzard is totally okay with this. If they want to one trick whatever they want to play, then form a group and go run in group comp. It doesn't really belong in solo queue, in my opinion. That's another thing, like, role limits would encourage people to group up, which I think is the solution to fixing comp, is we need to find ways to encourage people to group up. And knowing that solo queue is a less than ideal environment for playing Overwatch, because it's in its own playlist, people will tend to avoid it, I think, and would go out to form groups, as long as there is an LFG system to make that easier. And people who just want to jump into a couple matches without stressing themselves out, maybe get a little bit of SR, maybe not, whatever. Just run a couple matches, get a little bit of SR. I think those people just want to go into a solo queue match that has two tanks, two supports, and two DPS. I think people, most people in solo queue would take an average support player, an average tank player, than five specialized DPS. So that's just my take on it. And again, it's not so much about whether you can or cannot climb in solo queue or if you're in elo hell i do feel you can climb if you are good enough but if you're running in solo queue you are making it so much harder on yourself yes forming groups forming six stacks does come with its own difficulties but individual play isn't necessarily one of them you have to take everything into account when when pros play they have a shot caller and a target caller right so they have someone dedicated to keeping track of enemy ultimates. Man advantage. They have a target caller who can read the situation and know which target they should be going for. Whoever's out of position or low health or they burnt their abilities and they're all on cooldown. The DPS or whoever doesn't have to worry about that because they have a pro backing them up doing that. When you're solo queuing, you have to do everything if you want to climb. And it's really tough. Not impossible, but really tough. 
So you are just making it harder on yourself to climb. I feel. I could be wrong about that. That's fine. You can debate that with me. But I feel it makes it harder for yourself. So just the other night I was playing some comp and I just got so tilted easily within like two matches because I had spent the entire weekend solo queuing and patience is like a glass of water. As soon as it's empty, you got to let it refill. So Monday morning, I was playing a few matches and I already was like, you know what? I'm so done with this, man. I'm so done. You know, I had, I think it was a ma match on uh, Lunar Colony and just literally no one was talking. Not, it's like, like I'm, I'm very friendly when first getting into a match. Hey everybody, how's it going? I decided to be a somber main recently, so I pretty much run her almost exclusively. And I always tell people like, hey, you know, if the somber's not working, I'm willing to switch, but just letting you know I am a somber main and I'm really good with her. And then nothing, no talking. Normally when I have the patience for it, I'm like, oh, you know, just, just do the best I can and just move on. But because I had spent all weekend being patient with these types of teams constantly, dealing with teams that just are basics, like not talking or not getting a decent comp, I don't even switch from Sombra if no one's talking because I know that, hey, they're not trying to help me out. Why would I play a hero that I'm not the greatest with? I need to play my best heroes. So that Monday morning, it just threw me over the edge. I was just like, I'm done. I'm so I'm like, so a little bit later that night when I had calmed down, uh, I went on to Gamerlink and some GM players had posted that, hey, they run some, they sometimes run Smurfs and run with their friends. I'm like, cool. I get to relax because, hey, I can run tanker support. I think I'm a better support player. I'm an okay tank player, but I think I'm better at support. I was like, yeah, if they want me to run a healer for them while they demolish everything, cool, I'm fine with that. I could use a little bit more SR after a night like this. So I teamed up with them, and it was me, two of the GM Smurfs, and a gold player. One of the things I noticed was that the GM players were not talking. The gold player was talking. I was already kind of exhausted and just out of it, so I wasn't talking that much. But the two GM Smurfs completely ignored him. He would make comments like, oh, we're getting carried right now. Hey, you guys are good. They didn't care. They didn't say anything. I don't know why. Maybe it was uh, some kind of smugness about it. or And I knew they were in chat because once in a while, one of them would say something. But it would be like somewhat relevant to the match or they'd be talking to their other buddy. And the other one would sometimes breathe into his mic. That's how I know they were both in chat. They just refused to talk to this kid. I just thought it was extremely rude. I kind of felt like, why are they? Why am I here with these guys if they only seem to be interested in just getting pocketed so they can stomp on low ranks? Personally, I don't think they were that good. And also, they refused to switch from DPS, no matter the comp. So it almost seemed like they had no interest in our SR. Just that they wanted to stomp low ranks. So anyways, this led to... Another GM player getting on his smurf and joining us. And this guy actually talked. He had a really good personality. And I noticed that he was casually talking about how on his smurfs, he throws games to drop rank so he can play with his friends. And then it just kind of reminded me like, oh, right, that's a problem in Overwatch. That's like a normal thing in Overwatch for people to throw games on their smurfs just so they can play with their friends. It's easy to get into a game and see the Torbjorn on attack or Symmetra on attack and be like, guys, hey, man, hey, I know maybe your last few games were bad, but there's no reason to get tilted and throw. Like, we can come back from this. It's fine. There's a good chance that that guy, I mean, as long as you look at his rank, is probably a smurf and he's not throwing because he's disenfranchised with comp. He's throwing because he wants to help his friend out who's at a lower rank. I don't know the percentage of how much that is happening compared to people who just tilt and just throw because they're just disenfranchised with competitive. I don't know. But it's significant enough because this is a normal thing in Overwatch. And Blizzard can't go around and just start banning people. I don't even think that's the right attitude, honestly, is just banning people who throw on their Smurfs all the time. I don't think that's the right approach. I'm not entirely sure what the solution is, but I think about... I don't know the ramifications for what I'm about to say, but what if... A GM could team up with his friend who's in gold. Horrible games, right? But doesn't if if the solo queue playlist is separate and you have the group playlist, well, when they team up with their gold friend, they're not affecting the solo queuers, they're affecting the group players. So if they're in a three man group or four man group, they would be affecting the other people, yes. But they also would be accepting the risk because if they get a mirror match of some GMs or masters mixed with 
plats and golds, even bronze. Oh my god, I don't know. They would be taking responsibility of the risk, knowing that having a gold on their team is going to be a good chance that they are pulling most of the weight, and the gold really isn't pulling their weight. But the other team will be dealing with the same thing, right? Plus, I think we all know that uh, pretty much every player really cares about their SR, so they probably wouldn't be teaming up with their gold friends that much. And they would probably be grouping up with them on their smurfs, but at least their smurfs can be at a high rank and still be able to team up with their gold friends without affecting their main account's SR, which means less throwing. I mean, it's not like a, a couple of GMs with gold can just win games constantly because they would be going against other GMs with gold. Maybe just all GMs. I don't know. Because, you know, the matchmaker couldn't find a GM with the gold on the other team for the other team. I don't know. Again, I don't know the full ramifications for a system like that, but it would reduce the amount of throwers that simply throw just so they can play with their friends and help them rank up. I think that's everything. I've been soaking on this for a few days now and wrote down notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. So I, I think that's everything. So why don't you guys tell me your thoughts about a solo queue playlist on its own and instead of roll queuing, it's a roll limit. And I gave a lot of reasons as to why there should be a role limit in the solo queue playlist. And the goal here is to encourage people to group up because that's the only way to get the ideal Overwatch experience is when you're in groups. So the goal is to encourage people to group up and to kind of see solo queue as poor man's comp. So people be like, uh, don't, don't do solo queue. Uh, you're just going to work three times as hard and only gain a little bit of SR and it's going to take forever. Because that's not what Overwatch is about. It's not about everyone doing this solo plays all the time. It's about working together, right? So the only way to really get that is in groups. So tell me what you guys think. Leave your comments below. I'm very interested. I could be wrong about all of this. But, you know, I do a lot of thinking and I'm pretty confident about this. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit and I approve this message.